Hello. Okay. Why I hate fanaticism. Fanaticism is a process where people base their entire existence of being part of a group. And the mission of that group is to annihilate others. And what happens when that group is successfully annihilating an out group? That you end up having a group of individuals whose only goal in life was to annihilate others. And the only place to direct that drive is to each other in the group. I also described the other problem with a uh, group based on fanaticism. It may get shit done, but even when it's splitting, what happens is the tendency of a fanatic is never to ever admit wrong, is never to admit wrongdoing. It is blind, a fanatic is blind to their own shortcomings and since they have self-esteem associated with the group, they are blind to the shortcomings of the group and its leaders. When no one is holding anyone accountable, you end up getting leaders that are corrupt and morally bankrupt, and they become predatory and vicious. This creates a group that is ran by, par by parasitic leaders is not a group that's going to last long, thus leading to a collapse. I also said another reason why fanatics seek a movement is so they can join a group, which the whole entire group's sheer will is trying to create stability and certainty. But the way many ideas generate this zeal creates this narcissistic blindness which leads to end up a corruption and disintegration of the movement and thus of the group, thus leading to instability once again, thus defeating the purpose. I also said the reason why people join fanat of groups and ideas that promote fanaticism is because the person is mentally or emotionally flawed somehow. Maybe they grew up and they were had no and they were a latchkey kid. And so they joined a gang to feel a sense of belonging and guidance and protection. Maybe mommy beat them a little bit too much. Or maybe they were picked on as in school as bullies when they were bullied as kids. Or they just can't get along with nobody because no matter how hard they try, they're always wrong. So what happens is these people with these emotional imbalances join this group of other people with emotional balances, eliminate other outgroups, dominate, ref uh, dominate. The reason why they're eliminating these other groups is they're projecting their Jungarian shell, their issues onto the other group, and by saying we can eliminate this group, we eliminate all problems. Not really. The emotional problems of each individual member is still there. This is not good. Now, anyone who's met an SJW, a Nazi, or some, or a Bible-thumping Christian, should know by now that they, as much as they like to preach to high heavens how kind and compassionate they are, they are not. They are abusive. Because others have abused them. They are abusive because they are emotionally flawed. So they can be as sincere as they want to be. About living up to their morals. You might see in someone who is in their own head pure and perfect. But on the outside seems like a tormented soul possessed by demons. Psychological demons in this case. For example, recently there's this video on the internet about a woman who went off on this guy named Humongous, who called himself Humongous, and she just went, she just snapped. She did that because she was insecure. She's insecure because her idea was designed to make her mentally unstable.
I say that in her mind, she was being the hero. Or at least thinks she does. But I'm using that as a demonstration that even through you think you are the hero, and you are adhering to a moral code, it doesn't matter. If you are emotionally screwed up, you will always, if you screwed up and you do not understand the contents of your subconscious mind, of all the wounds, shame, and guilt, and emotional baggage, if you don't deal with that, you cannot be a good person. You will always behave in ways that are abusive and wrong. And a lot of these people have had abuse done in the past. That's what made them sick. That's what made them a fanatic. And now they're trying to abuse you to spread their sickness around. It's as if they're possessed by a, uh, by a meme that by spreading, it can, by spreading and influencing people's behavior to get more and more people sick. Because the more people get sick and the more people makes miserable, the more food it gets. It just seems like that. So, and then the other thing you may notice about these ideologies that create zealotry is they seem to be collectivist or authoritarian. If you get enough of these people who are mentally and emotionally unstable, you will create, they will eventually, as due to the meme programming, create a totarian group structure. You will have a very oppressive inner group, governments, or management. So, with that in mind, if you are for freedom, you must, and you are for tolerance, you must first learn how to deal with your own emotional holes. Once you do that, you can do whatever you want, and you can do no wrong. Then you encourage other people to do that. I was going to say something, but I'm just recording this to shoot off ideas. But I'm recapping to make it strict or quick. In this video, I'm trying to illustrate my idea of a counter to illustrate what I see, what the social justice warriors and feminists are doing that does not make them tolerant and make them against what they claim to be for. And for an alternative that will actually reach the goal that they claim to have. 